Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie and I garden in zone six. And if you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back. I'm really excited to be back on here. Today, I'm gonna to be going over my seed starting, um, kind of how my plants are going right now. Um, we have about a month until, about a month and a half until they're gonna go into the ground. And I'm actually gonna be running a plant sale, so you'll see a lot more plants. If you see my garden, you know that it's not overly huge. Um, and so I have a lot of plants that would never fit into this garden. So I'm gonna be having a plant sale, which is something that I've planned on doing. Um, but yeah, let's go take a look at what I have. All right, guys, bear with me. The lighting is not that great in this room. Um, it's actually a pretty dark room in my basement, which is where I'm growing all of my plants. Um, next year, I would love to have a greenhouse. That's kind of my goal. Um, but this year, everything's gonna be grown under grow racks and then hardened off for a week or two uh, before everything goes into the ground. So here is what I got. Show you just my setup. So I have four different levels. And when I set this rack up originally, I made sure that I spaced it to where when my plants are at full height before they go into the ground, made sure that they won't grow out of this space. So everything is perfectly where I want it um, when I set this up. Um, but if you see, I have this tin foil in the back and that just helps kind of reflect the light, which the plants on the back row seem to do, be doing a lot better than these front row plants. Um, these ones seem to be stretching just a little bit, but for the most part, they're actually doing pretty, pretty good. And then down here, I have all my, all my peppers. And then this is kind of a mixed row down here. Okay, so I'm going to start, I'm going to start with my top row. And on this row, I have sugar rush peach pepper. These are my smallest peppers. I did start them about a week later than my other peppers. But if you guys have grown these, is this normal for, is this normal for these um, peppers? Because they look very small compared to my other ones. So leave a comment if you have grown them and you experience the same thing or you don't experience the same thing. I'm just honestly curious. And then over here, so right here, I did little pollinator packs, which I'm going to be selling. And so I have just Red Knight Marigolds and Alyssum. And then some of these are mixed with chamomile. I kind of just did some mixed packs. I thought it would be kind of fun for people. And then these are just zinnias. I have some more. These are tangerine gem marigolds, which these all need to be repotted, actually. This is a black-eyed Susan. I kind of did this last minute. So I only had one that came up. So I'm just going to try it out. I've never done this before. I usually just buy them. And then these are my bush red cherries. I did these, gosh, maybe like three weeks behind all my other tomatoes, but those all need to be repotted into four inch pots too, which I'm going to be doing today. And then I have my Genovese basil, which is my favorite basil. I have my purple basil right here and then parsley. These are Cosmos, which I know are really easy to grow from seed in the ground, but I just wanted to get a head start on these guys. And then, yeah, these are all more little pollinator packs that I'll be selling. I think they're all, yep, four cells. And then here is some coleus. You guys can see that. This coleus actually grows pretty quick. So once I transplant these, I'll probably transplant them pretty small too. They come up very, very quick. So here's kind of the overview of this one. Okay, here's my second level. <laughs> um, I have orange hat tomatoes. These are a micro dwarf variety. They get, gosh, like six to 12 inches tall, sometimes a little bit more, but they are supposed to be produce, very heavy producers. And these are for my green stock. I've never grown these, so I'm pretty excited, but I've done a lot of research and these seem to be a really, really great variety uh, for the green stock. And then I have San Marzano, which I have grown before, which are lovely if you're going to be making anything Italian. They are definitely probably one of the best tomatoes for pasta or sauces. And then what else do we have here? So I have my Indigo Rose. These ones I'm super excited for, probably the most excited for. I'll show you guys. They kind of look, I don't know if you can see that. 
but they have like a purple spine and purple leaves. And they are supposed to be very, very high in antioxidants. One of the most for tomatoes, I believe it actually is the highest antioxidants for tomatoes. Um, they have, they're a dark, dark purple, almost like a bluish black color. And it is a cherry size, a little bit bigger than a cherry size tomato. Okay, and my next is I have Cherokee Purple. These are one of my favorite. They have a little bit of a smoky flavor to them if you've never grown them or tasted them. And they are wonderful in a lot of different things. I love them in salsa, but you can really do whatever you would like with them. So here is these little beauties, which look all amazing. And down to my next row. Here is some of my peppers. So I have serranos. I have jalapenos back here. I have several jalapenos. I have a lemon jalapeno, which I've never done, which will be pretty fun. I have sweet banana. And I usually grow hot peppers, but every now and then I don't mind a mild pepper. And then I have, and this is my daughter's. She wanted to do her pumpkin. I would normally just do this straight into the ground with a seed, but she really wanted to plant her pumpkin ahead of time. So we are doing that. And then I have poblanos or anchos. These are one of my favorite peppers. These ones are a little bit smaller too, but I started all of these peppers on this row in February and they are definitely, peppers definitely take longer than tomatoes. So I started those several weeks, I think three weeks ahead of my tomatoes. All right, and then on the bottom row down here, and these are watermelon beefsteaks, and they get to be about the same size as a beefsteak, um, and they are pink in color, and the flavor is very, very similar. It's just fun to grow a little bit different variety. And then these are pineapple tomatoes. So these have kind of tropical notes. I love these tomatoes too. Definitely one of my favorites. And then I have some pasilla. If I, I might be saying some of these wrong, <laughs> but I have some pasilla. These ones are pretty tiny too. And then back over here, I have some more tomatoes, two more flats of tomatoes. I have some Amish paste, which I've never done these, but I've heard really good things about these paste tomatoes. I have heard that they are just as good, if not better, than the San Marzano. So I'm pretty excited for those ones too. I plan on doing some pasta sauces and canning them. And then just some more watermelon beef steaks and Amish paste. But yeah, you can see these ones are stretching just a little bit right here. Um, but overall, they seem to be doing pretty good. And I've just been rotating them in and out. And this is what I did last year, and they seem to do really well. So yeah, here is this little bottom row. Looking good. Still, like I said, about six weeks till they go into the ground, which, holy cow, tomatoes grow so fast. You guys, I'm going to post a picture of what my tomatoes looked like. Um, I'll post it right here. I'm going to show you what they looked like 12 days ago, and you're going to see the difference in size. And then kind of off this little side, I have just some more pollinator packs um, that I'll be selling. So yeah, most of these are gonna be sold um, and the rest will be going into my garden. So I'll probably, last year I did, I think 17 tomato plants. I'll probably do about the same this year. And then I think I did like 10 pepper plants. So that should be plenty for my this space that I have. Okay, so this is everything that is gonna be getting repotted today in these four inch pots, which I have all set up. And so I just fill with kind of moist um, soil, a high quality soil, that is very important when you're starting seeds. And I just fill it to the top and flatten it out. And then, so what I'm doing today is I'm doing parsley, my Genovese basil, my purple basil. These are super tiny, but they transplant really well when they're this small, so I don't worry about it. And then these are my bush cherry tomatoes, which grow pretty quickly. Um, and so when you're transplanting your cherry tomatoes, you wanna make sure they have 
those true set of leaves, which are these leaves that you see in the middle. Show you right here. So you wanna make sure that they have these leaves in and that's when they are ready to transplant. And once these are transplanted, they grow so much faster because they're in a lot better soil. Um, they'll, they'll be out of the seed starting mix, which doesn't have a lot of nutrients. And then they'll be into a high quality potting soil with a super small amount of fertilizer mixed in. So I'll show you guys how I do this. So let's do the bush cherry tomatoes. You guys, this is so easy. Like don't overcomplicate this process. It is very, very simple. And so tomatoes are pretty tough on their roots, but I'll show you what it looks like up close. These roots look great. And you can separate these so easily. Tomatoes are not sensitive to root disturbance at all, but still like I like to be gentle. And you bury these guys deep. And I'm gonna go through at the end, I'll just show you what I do right now at the very end. And I just top these off with a little bit more soil. Just to the point where they're, the leaves aren't touching the ground, but you bury that stem. Because that whole entire stem that you just buried is gonna turn into roots, which is gonna make your plant a lot more um, drought tolerant, which is very helpful um, starting seeds or really in any case of a tomato's life. So definitely bury these guys deep. All right, guys, I'm going to speed this video up and just get planting. Okay, and so after I transplant all of my plants, this is for every plant that I have, I do the exact same thing. I, once I put them into four inch pots, I fertilize them with this fish fertilizer from Alaska. Sometimes I do use Fox Farms. Um, I love Fox Farms, but I kind of want to try this out uh, this year. So, so far it's going really well, and I might actually switch over to this with my green stock in the summertime and fertilize that. But what I do, is I use this fish fertilizer. And if you read the back of your fertilizer, which by the way, this is organic, which is all I use on all of my plants. Um, I try really hard with my soils and everything else. So you use this organic fertilizer and it's two tablespoons per gallon of water for vegetables. And so when you're doing starts, they're still very tender. And so I do a quarter strength of that. So I did a half of a tablespoon per gallon of water and I mixed it up and then I just put it in this little watering can and I will just water these thoroughly with this fertilizer. And once I fertilize them this time, then I'll be fertilizing them once more again, probably here in about three weeks. Um, my other ones are about ready to be fertilized again and I'll still do the same exact strength. I don't like a very strong fertilizer for my starts. I don't think, feel like they need it. Um, because they're still so small, but they definitely need some sort of food because they're just in these tiny little containers, which they soak up those nutrients really quick. Okay, so for today, that is basically just my growing setup that I have right now. And also just how I transplant from my seed starting mix into their containers which this is our last container before they go into somebody's garden or my own garden. But yeah, this is how I do it, guys, um, how I fertilize. And I hope you found this video useful. I hope you can take some information away and make your gardens grow bigger and better. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today, and I will catch you guys next time.